So yeah, you know, back in the hometown, we actually about to go visit, uh, go to this FCA event, uh, meet up with Charlie Ward, Florida State legend, uh, Corey Fuller, uh, Willie Spears. Uh, what is this truck doing? Car doing? But uh, but yeah, we just about to go meet up with them. You know, uh, you know, something inspirational, something you know, giving back. You know, whatever the case may be. But at the end of the day. You know, it's a Florida State connection. Uh, got a chance to do something, you know, so why not? You know, get a chance to meet some people that I never met before and hopefully get a chance to inspire some people because that's really what it's always about, you know, always to wanting to lift people up, you know what I'm saying, in any way, shape, or form, help out in any way that I can. Let's see what it's about, man. Hopefully it's a good turnout. Sound like they got the war chat going on. I hear it. What's going on, my man? What's, What's going up? on? Y'all doing all right? Yeah, how you doing? Yeah. Yeah. JB. JB, okay, I'm saying it wrong. What's up? You know, hey, go back in. What's up, bro? What's up, bro? Good to see you. Yes, sir. Well, how you doing? Uh, Blessings. Blessings. Don't Use your bathroom. What's up, yo? How you doing? What's up, baby? What's up, man? You doing good, man? Yeah, man. How you doing? It's been a minute. All right. Yes, sir. How you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you, too. A little bit of food. That's a great coach, man. He's a champion. Doing good. How you doing, man? Yes, sir. Jaden. Nice to meet you. What's up, man? You all right? Yes, sir. Jaden. Corey Fuller. What's up, man? Josh. What's going on, Jaden? Nice to meet you. Yes, sir. Nice to meet you. What's up, baby? What's up? Appreciate it, dog. Always. Of course. Hey, now, can I bring up no questions home tonight? Yeah, can I bring it up? Of course. Of course, man. Jaden. Nice to meet you. Yes, sir. Hey. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. You both. FCA. Guys, our area is really not used to anything like this. Like Panama City is, we're not used to anything. We're not used to giving a donation and having somebody come talk to us. So I talked to several people. I'm, it's going to be great. I'm going to be the high praise. It's an amazing church here in Panama City. And, and they're big Florida State fans. So that helps. And uh, they do a lot uh, in our community. Um, they'll be embarrassed for me to tell you this, but when the hurricane hit our city, it really knocked out a lot of churches. The church I grew up in doesn't even exist anymore. So I would say, not exaggerating, seven to ten churches especially african-american churches don't exist because the storm took them out and because of insurance issues they it's hard to rebuild but high praise allowed many churches to use their facilities for many many different things and so we're just grateful we went to church here for a few years we lived on the side of town and uh, pastor gay is around the youngest around his son was actually a chaplain at uh Rudd back in the day and so we're gonna get started we'll get people a little more time to get here we're not gonna take too much of your time we have a demo film in the back, and we just want three reps, okay? So quarterback, wide receiver, DB. <laughs> quarterback, wide receiver, DB. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. listen, this, all we need is one rep each. That's it, guys. You got one rep in here. And if you believe in God, he's going to be. We got to play last time I perform. We got to play. Last time he coached in the pros, he got to play. So which one you want us to do? No, how much for one rep? A lot of money. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the hell gonna be like out for the play. Hey, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Bro. I ain't taking no Advil in, in enough time. So, <laughs> it's so like an hour to kick in. We're in the green room with the great Charlie Ward, his beautiful wife, Tanya. We got Corey Fuller. We got Kez McCorvey. We got my man RJ on the camera. We got Burt Reed. Give me your name again. Josh. Josh, That's you played with Coach Crosby back in the day. And JV and Elliot, all right? So the great thing about this, they don't know how I set this up. They don't realize what I did. <laughs> Charlie Ward, a.k.a. Coach Ward, he's the quarterback, all right? Nobody's going to hit him. It's like that practice back in the day. Nobody's going to hit him. And then this young man is going to play defensive back. He's going to play wide receiver. This is pay-per-view, all right? And then this man is going to play wide receiver. This man is going to play defensive back. All these guys have spent time on the great stage of Florida State and all played some level of pro. All right, this guy right here played pro with a different kind of ball, though. He played a different kind of ball pro. So y'all tune in. It's pay-per-view. We're only asking for $15,000 to watch one rep of each person. Hey, hey. No, that's not a good show. Just for personal. That's not good. Not for $15,000. We can't even split that up equally. That's not enough. That's not enough. You got five X players, and you, you want, want us to get $3,000 to a piece? You want an even number? No. Oh, that CBA. Yeah, he he you need that, that CBA that. written up. Oh, <laughs>
person we're going to interview tonight has arguably the greatest rags to riches story you ever want to hear. His high school football team, and Pastor Josh was his chaplain, his high school football team wasn't very good when he was there. I played at the same high school, and, and we had had a downward sparrow. Didn't do pretty good, didn't do good. He was on that team. Didn't win a lot of games. And so what statistics say is you can't get recruited to go to college. But he had a 4 point grade point average, but he was this tall. And he didn't look like a football player. I talked to his college coach last week, Coach Charles Kelly, who's now the co defensive coordinator at the University of Alabama. He brags and brags and brags on this young man. Not just his ability on the field, but his character. He said, put him in the game against Louisville. Lamar Jackson, who won the Heisman Trophy, who plays in the NFL, who won MVP, was playing quarterback. And Jim Fisher, who's the head coach of Texas a right now, he said, why are you putting the Elliott kid in the game? What are you doing? The people in the box, why is JV in the game? He said, I know what I'm doing. Took his head and said, oh. Two plays later, JV picks off Lamar Jackson. And that day forward, everybody realized, man, this guy can play. He goes on, my man got a James Winston jersey on right there. There's a man from James Winston, he gets an opportunity with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He goes there, makes the team, plays for the Bucks, also plays for the Carolina Panthers. Now he's playing professionally in Canada. What a great rags to riches story. We're talking with a big hand to Jamie Elliott. Jamie Elliott. To push back 2013 to 2015. A proud product of Bay County, while at Florida State, he went from walk on to starter. He spent time in the NFL with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Carolina Panthers. Currently, he is a defensive back for the Calgary Stampeders of the Canadian Football League. Your noble, Javian. Elliot. Yeah, I'm going again. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was in the honors classes. Try again. You good? Uh, appreciate you guys for having me. Definitely glad to be here. For sure. No doubt. So, tell us about playing at Rutherford, not having a lot of success as a player, but having aspirations of playing big time football. Yeah, so, as you said, you know, I went to Rutherford High School. Uh, man, didn't have no scholarships, zero. Uh, used to always wonder why this kid was getting a scholarship, or why, you know, why I was going so unnoticed, and uh, never really knew why, you know, it was all part of God's plan, but, um, you know, I graduated high school, don't really know what to do next, and I actually go three years without playing football, you know, I go three years without, I'm just a regular student, just going to class, and, um, you know, I met him, and, you know, he could tell that story, but I, I, I went up to Oklahoma for a semester, but, that was only during the spring, so technically I didn't even play football there. I went to like one practice and uh, just went back to being a student. And then, you know, that's, that's when I ended up going to Florida State. Right, so <clears throat> I was coaching college football in Oklahoma, and Jamie needed a place to play. I was a defensive coordinator way in Oklahoma at a little small Division II school, and, and, and nobody how knows this story. And Jamie was looking for a place to play. TJ Williams called me and said, Jamie and Elliot needs a place to play. I said, well, I heard of him. I know he played at Rutherford. But tell me about his character. I'm not worried about him, his playing ability. If he can play, we'll find out. If he can't, we got a hundred and some kids on the team. Tell me about his character. And Coach Williams said, oh, above reproach. He's a great guy. Yes, sir, no, sir, kid. Hard worker, straight A's. Just needs an opportunity. We brought you up to Northwestern. And I ended up leaving. Yep, I ended up leaving. We had some issues with my contract. I ended up leaving, going back to coach high school ball. And next thing you know, they told me, Jamie didn't even work out with the team. Jamie ended up leaving himself. And somebody said, he said he's gonna walk on to Florida State. And I'm thinking to myself, okay. From zero scholarships to Florida State, okay. Next thing I know, I went to a game. I saw you outside, saw your family. And so tell us about how good it felt to follow your dream and play at the great University of Florida State in Tallahassee and actually be a player, not just be on the team, but actually contribute. What was that feeling like? You know, about that whole scenario, um, I, I want to go more than just playing football because I made that decision to go out to Oklahoma because I was anxious. I was itching to play football. 
and God had a plan for me, right? But I made that decision to go out to Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. You made that decision without praying, without seeking God. That was on you. Exactly. So when I go out there and things not working the way I wanted to go, you know, there's a reason why. So, you know, when I get to Florida State and I bump my head out there too, you know, a lot of people don't know. A lot of people don't know a lot about my story. You know, my first year at Florida State, you know, I walk on, I only have two years of eligibility. So it's all or nothing. And my first year, they just won a national championship. And, um, you know, I'm lit. I'm, I didn't win a national championship, but I'm on the team. So I'm partying, I'm doing everything all the other players doing. But guess what? They, they, they getting their job done. Like me, I lack up, I, I messed up in school. I become ineligible my first year. So, here I, here I go again. One more shot, just one more shot. That's it, I only got one year left. This is it, you know what I'm saying? So I lock in and, um, you know, I eliminate all distractions, everything, locked in, bought into the system. Did everything I could because there is no other chance. So I lock in and um, impress the coaches, do everything I can because it's more than just uh, being the best walk on. I got to show them that I'm better than the scholarship players. I got to show them that, you know, I'm, I'm there with Jalen Ramsey. So it ain't necessarily that. Like, and y'all whole secondary can arguably be one of the greatest. Coach Fuller, when he this, it could be arguably one of the top secondary. This is what Coach Kelly told me. Yeah. I, I know he played with Deion Sanders, but Coach Kelly told me that y'all, and he's my two because he's a DB coach. But he said the secondary was pretty good. Almost everybody in that room got drafted. <laughs> Here I am in the back of the room. So I got to show these people that I'm better than every one of these corners. You know what I'm saying? Whether I am or not, I got to show them I work harder than them, you know what I'm saying, something. So, so that's, that's how that happened. And then my second and last year, I got my scholarship at the camp and, um, and then look back, man, then look back. That's awesome. Tell us about uh, Pastor Joshua and the FCA influence there. Brother Brian, I know that went to some FCA camps while you were there, having him as a chaplain. What, what did that mean for you and how did it help you grow spiritually? Man, FCA, I remember those camps. Being in Mariana, I had an opportunity to go to a camp in Duane, down south. And, um, you know, I remember some of the songs that we used to sing. Yeah, yeah, chance. Yeah, 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 yeah. speak to y'all one year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so, I remember that. I remember, uh, and then some of the lessons, you know, some of the personal stories you told, don't, you know, but, and also the bigger picture. You know, it's more than just being an athlete. You know, I still, well, I probably lost it in a hurricane, but I, I kept that Bible. Green, it was like white, green, and black. Yeah, that's that's Bible. Bible. Yeah. I kept that, you know. Uh, I remember the Let's Do It song was the theme that year. Yeah, yeah. That's it. so I, I kept that. And uh, really, you know, some of the things that I learned there just I applied to my life, you know, because, you know, as an athlete, you got one, you got one lifestyle, and then you also got a lifestyle that that's better for you in terms of living with God. So, you know, um, you know, always in the back of my mind, it's really, it's always been the first thing, but, you know, been doing a lot better with uh, keeping God first. That's good. What would you say to someone that's listening or watching this video later, and they're thinking, I don't even know what FCA is, why should I donate to FCA, FCA? why should I give to FCA? What would you say to that person that's on the fence about donating to the Fellowship of Christian Athletes? Well, for one, it's, a, it's an opportunity to put younger people or younger athletes in a vicinity where they're trying to bring the best out of those kids. You know, it's more than just football. Fellowship of Christian athletes. So, you know, being an athlete, you, you have so many distractions, so many things that can steer you the wrong way. You know, in this program, this, you know, this FCA thing is trying to get younger guys to keep their head on straight and walk the right path. And um, that's really what it's all about, you know. I want to take this, as an alumni of Rutherford, my wife, and I know we love her, I was there today speaking, matter of fact. Rutherford's been in school since 1962. Less than five guys have been to the NFL. And I say less than five, I was only number three. And maybe some I don't know, and I know most of the history. You're a legend in this community. We're so proud of the man you become. We're proud of the example that you set. That we don't see negative media about you, negative things. And I'm happy that you're still playing chasing your dream. And I'm going to tell you this, Coach Kelly, I was talking to him, I text you, we were talking face to face, that's the second time that we're talking about you. This man's in Alabama, the Alabama, 
and he's glowing about J.J. Elliott. So that says a lot about the impression that you made on him, and it says a lot about the impression that Pastor Joshua made on you. He was your champion at Rutherford. So, man, we want to tell you we thank you, we appreciate you, and we're rooting for you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, you know, appreciate you guys for having me here, and I would love to take the credit, and I would love to take the glory, but at the end of the day, God, get on board. Amen. Thank you for having me. Thank you, God a miracle worker. That's, like I told you, you play DB, you play basketball, God perform miracles. Yeah. And that's his fast, his DNA. Let him do his job. And it's easy for me to say, that didn't happen to my brother tonight, it happened to yours. Yeah. But I just feel that God telling me to tell you, trust him through this drama. You know, and I really, I told you, bro, I really believe you're supposed to be here when you got that news. I do too. I, I mean, you're you in the house of God. Yeah. Uh, bro, I'm men of God. So, man, I'm uh, so proud of you, dog. Know, like, bro, I, I told Charles Kelly, I said, when he said it's going to force it, I was like, what? He said, never, ever, ever tell a kid what he can't do. Oh, man. Overall, I feel like the event was a success. Definitely enjoyed myself. Got a chance to meet some legends. Got a chance to just, at the end of the day, the goal is to uplift people, man. Spread love. Put a smile on people's face, man. Like overall, you know, I had got some got some terrible news, man. Like my brother had got shot eight times, got killed, man. And my dad called me, they was in the middle of the praise and worship, and I knew to go answer the phone and um I lost it, man. I lost it. I lost it. Like, my dog, man. My dog, Tyreek. It's crazy, because I was just, I was just, uh, like, I was telling them in the room. My auntie had asked why I was in town, you know, because there was no, no event, no. You know what I'm saying? Nothing like that, no, you know, so I was just, I was just like, man, I'm just glad to be home because the last two, three times I came home, it was because somebody died. So I was just like, man, I'm just glad to be home because nobody, nobody's dead. And in the middle of that, you know, I get that phone call and it's just like, dang. But, I don't know, it's tough, man. Definitely pray for me and my family. You know, don't even seem real to be real. To be honest, like, I don't know, man. Overall, like, just being around those people, being in the church, you know, not that there's ever a good time to get that news. It's just more comforting, you know, having people pray for you and you know, just being around Christians, being around other believers, it's better than being at home by yourself and getting that news, you know?